Hi, Greg.
Okay, here we go. You're doing it. Yeah, we're in. Yes, we can do. Okay. Uh, so usually it is the one taking all the notes. Uh, nice bow tie. Or vice versa, yeah, whichever way you prefer. Do you use an app? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm just glad they didn't block it. Okay, single S, right? Uh, yes. I guess let's give it a couple minutes and then we can get going. Do you want to come around or are you just going to? I'll just listen. Okay. I'm not really in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> If there's things that folks want to discuss that are not currently in the minutes, um, please go ahead and add them. So far we have uh, bots, uh, more discussion on filters, extensions, uh, and a chat about uh, whether we should try to merge data plane API and Envoy somehow. Can people hear me? Okay. I don't think I can hear you. Uh, That's mostly muted myself. Muted. Ah, okay. Everyone was, muted. Everyone was muted. Got it. All right, should we uh, get started? Yeah? Okay. Uh, first up on the agenda is uh, bots. So I, I had opened a GitHub issue, which uh, let, let me actually find real quick. One second. Uh, issues, bots. Okay, got it. Bots tracking. Um, I'm going to link it in, into the document. So 
And uh, the, the general kind of feeling from the maintainers at this point is that there's a whole bunch of random things that, that bots could probably help us with like helping actually fix DCO, uh, doing release tasks, like doing cleanup, helping to assign people, uh, you know, issues who, who, who are maintainers. Um, and the, the feeling also is that there's a bunch of people out there who either, you know, don't know or don't want to learn C++ um, or, or they're just not interested in doing network programming, uh, but there's people that would like to help. Uh, so I, I think our thinking is that we'd like to get kind of a pretty good idea of all of the different types of automation that we would actually like, uh, and then possibly try to reach out to the larger community to find people who might be might be interested. Um, so that's the general thinking. So I don't know that we have to kind of discuss it at super length today, but would love to hear people's thoughts on either uh, what type of automation people would like to have, um, any, any ideas on, you know, venues in which we could find people that might want to help um, or anything like that. Hmm. I'll, th I'll throw in one plug for a PR I have up right now, which is about um, sort of automating uh, sort of issue creation for deprecation. I think you know, when I, just put, I wrote that in like an hour or two and it's just using, you know, Pi GitHub and um, Git Python and you know, within, you know, 50 lines of code or whatever, you can write, you can do a lot. You know, this isn't a particularly heavyweight thing to do. I think it's, in fact, I think most of the work here will be just making sure that this is operationalized and we can. We have, it. we have literally like probably 20,000 lines of Python code at Lyft that does this type of stuff. So if you're ever looking for a different job, you can, you can bring this <laughs> script <laughs> to the big leaves. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, I mean, you can do like super amazing things with the, with the GitHub, uh, API. So I, I, I think this is kind of a, a larger issue, which is it'd be really nice to figure out, you know, like we, we could definitely use a bot that we actually can write and deploy. It's not super clear to me, like where we would deploy it. Um, so I, I think that's probably a question that we could take offline with Chris from CNCF. Um, just to talk about like, should we deploy it on something like Heroku or, or like, do we want to get some kind of small AWS or GCP account where like we could deploy on a micro instance or something like that? Um, I, I just don't really know how these things are typically done. Yeah, I mean, also, but some projects, they, they're interested in, you know, more complicated, let's say webhooks and things like that, you know, for Envoy in the scale of our development, I think like a cron job which runs every yep. minute so would be mm -hmm. adequate yeah. to do all our needs. Yeah, there's there's like super simple things to do. With that said, um, having done a bunch of GitHub programming, like doing the actual webhook stuff is also super simple. Yes. So if we actually have a host running, like the the, the problem with, with the webhooks is that the webhooks are lossy, which we found. So you still probably have to do some type of cron job anyway, but if you wanted to do like a cron job that ran less often and then do webhooks to have it be faster, you, you probably have to do webhooks to do things like if someone typed a, like a slash assign, like you would want that to happen right away. Um, or if we did a bot that could help people fix DCO, you probably want that to happen because you'd want the bot to be able to comment back and forth. Um, but I, I think that like if we find a place to host a bot and we can then find people to work on it and actually work on deploying it, it it's more, it's just, again, it's like, it sounds simple in theory, but it's like, if we have a bot deployed somewhere, we need to figure out like source control for the bot code, like how do we deploy it, permissions for deploying. There's just like a bunch of kind of non-trivial things to, to sort out. So, okay, so I, I, I guess I would suggest that um, maybe we could take it to the GitHub issue and we could just put all of our ideas there in terms of things that we would like to see. Um, and then maybe we can talk to Chris over at CNCF to figure out like how would we host something um, that's yeah. probably what I would suggest. And on a related topic, um, you know, I find as a reviewer, um, the GitHub interface is pretty terrible in allowing me to see sort of updates on you know, the last time in which, you know, a particular PR has been modified and give me an idea of, you know, 
as I do my sweeps every few hours. I would really like either a better, I don't know if anyone's aware of other tools to interface with GitHub's API, which allows you to sort of just get, you know, what's changed, which I'm assigned to in the last six hours. Because I feel that would actually help improve the velocity of turnarounds of reviews, at least for the ones that I'm doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything off the top of my head. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. But even what you just talked about, we could write 100 lines of Python code that would basically do a sweep and like send people emails. So it's like there's, there's, I think there's pretty low hanging fruit. You could probably do some Slack integration also. So you can just like ask. We're just going full, full hipster yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, Slack. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we can, you know, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So at, at Lyft, again, not to plug our totally hipster development thing, <laughs> but um, we, we have like a whole set of bots that like are on Slack and like also actually go through and talk to GitHub. Um, and you'd be surprised at how little code that, that actually is like the Slack API is super simple. The GitHub API is super simple. So it's more just like, where do we host the code? So, okay, how about this? Like, wh why don't we find like wh where to host some code? Um, and then actually getting like a Slack token and, and like a yeah. GitHub token that we share is super simple. And then I suspect that we could hack on some stuff pretty quickly. Yeah. Sound, sound good? Okay, That's good. So I okay, you're doing that action item? Yeah, so I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Um, wh whoever's typing, just take the action item to me, and I will figure out where to actually host host code. Okay. Um, anyone out there ha have any further comments on bots or automation or anything? No. Okay. Um, okay. Next topic is um, so. People might have seen, um, I, I've started to do PRs for the repo reorg. So the, the, the goal is to kind of uh, get the extension code in kind of uh, a, a more known and consistent way, um, both for you know, making it easier for folks to discover extensions, like learn from them. Um, and, you know, and, and also in the future, I, I think one of the ideas is that we would like to be able to have code owners for extensions that are not actual core maintainers. And, and, and I think this will help us scale. So this, this kind of discussion item is a, a, an open-ended discussion. I don't really have an answer right now, which is in the future, as we increasingly get people that want to um, you know, have extensions that are potentially in the Envoy repo, you can think how the Linux kernel works with device drivers. You know, th there's a whole process in terms of how do we actually scale that in terms of CI. And, and, and that ranges from things where you know, we have extensions in the repo where they're not actually tested in CI and they're only given like a cursory look for maintainers, you know, that this is somewhat sane to like they're tested as part of CI to we actually have some type of dual sign off process where we have, you know, first level owners who will do most of the reviews and then a maintainer who just does like a quick, a, a quick sanity pass. So there's there's lots of different models here. Um, I, I don't. I don't really have any answer now. Um, there's. There's a bunch of thoughts. So I, I guess I just wanted to kind of start this discussion um, and, and see if anyone has any thoughts or strong opinions on. You know, if we were to start to extend the repo to allowing uh, both different organizations and, and and companies potentially to have filters or extensions, whether they be for stats or access logging or, or filters, um, how do we actually want to make that happen? So what, one thing I'll throw out there is I think it is a good idea to try and maintain a reasonably high quality bar as we do this, because one of the main advantages for upstreaming code from companies and uh, having all this code in the central repositories, as we move Envoy, um, as things break for you know these extensions, we fix them. If these, for example, extensions don't have suitable tests and that kind of stuff, that's going to be much harder, right? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. So, so one thing that had occurred to me is that what we could do is actually have a new repo, which is basically call it something like Envoy Extension Sandbox or like something like that. 
And that repo is basically a total free for all. Like it's not a free for all in that everyone gets commit access, but it's more of a free for all in the sense that every extension in that repo is not necessarily endorsed by the core Envoy kind of maintainer situation, but it's a place where people could actually collaborate. And if, if an extension shows like a particular quality bar or if the people that work on that extension want to promote it basically into the core Envoy repo, they would have to match Envoy style. They would have to do uh, CI and test. They'd have to do code coverage. Um, and then they would likely also have to, you know, essentially volunteer to be owners and maintainers of that extension. And that would involve, you know, not having a single point of failure. So having at least two people that, I, you know, that can, that can basically do reviews. And I, I think, again, this is not a fully formed idea, but I think what that would do is that that would allow people to actually host extensions in the Envoy org. And then if the extension looks promising, it, it would allow people to kind of agree to a, a higher bar that would then allow them to promote that extension into the main distribution. I see one comment. Oh. Chris is double books. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was my rough thinking just in terms of having that kind of dual dual layer. And again, like all of this has to be worked out, but like the way that I would that I would see it happening it is almost very similar to the way that CNCF has started to talk about their their like um, sandbox versus incubation kind of graduation levels. So like it's the kind of thing where to get into, you know, the sandbox extension repo, you just have to get the endorsement of like one maintainer or something like that, right? But then to actually, you know, get into the main Envoy repo, you'd have to go through the entire review process. You'd have to agree to like being owners and like doing code reviews and, and stuff like that. So that was my like super rough thinking. And, and I feel like that would be a way of kind of scaling this out um, to allow people to do extensions, but but not you know bog down the main repo with extensions that might not be as as well tested or as well supported. We would need to solve a similar sort of problem that we have with Envoy filter example for mm -hmm. CI, right? Yep. Yeah. So so it's like likely what would happen there is that, and again, like I'm I'm just brainstorming now, but I think you know, the, the way that I envision fixing Envoy filter example is again with bots. Like every day we basically bump the bump the Envoy SHA and do CI. And then on Envoy filter example and on Envoy sandbox, like if CI breaks, you know, there'd be some email or like some type of some type of notification, but that would be more of a best effort fix. Like someone would come along and basically have to fix it. Um, whereas obviously if we break CI in the core repo, that's a, that's a very real problem. But my, my thinking here was there's a, there's an issue that I opened and, um, you know, I, I was going to kind of write down some, some thoughts and kind of give, just give people the chance to comment. Um, I, I honestly don't know what the, what the right answer is here. My, my fear is that well it's not a fear it's kind of the current reality is that envoy is becoming popular to the extent that um there are going to be increasingly be a lot of companies that want extensions like they're going to want extensions for their products like whether those be security products or logging products or or stat products and i can in, i can just see that there would be an explosion of extensions in the main repo and i i, I feel that if we don't get ahead of this it's going to become chaos I mean, I like the idea of, yeah, or at least of having differentiated standards for review and, and the separation that it will allow our reviewing load to scale. Yep. <clears throat> Just from a purely selfish point of view. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. I mean, it's like there's there's absolutely no way that we can, you know, require the quote core maintainers to be reviewing, you know, 16 different stat extensions and like 14 different logging extensions. Like it just doesn't make sense. So I, I, I think I think there has to be this kind of like multi-layer approach. It's more, I, I've kind of come to the opinion though that trying to do a multi-layer approach within the main repo is probably gonna be pretty chaotic because you know, it's like you're either not going to test it in CI or you're going to have like relaxed standards for this one directory, which is kind of horrible, right? So it's like, to me, 
it's like if you're in the repo, you basically have to adhere to the standards. And then we have this other repo, which is a little bit more of a, it's not a total free for all, but it's a little more of a, a little more of a free for all. And your expectation for the other repo then would be that if, you know, we have some CI failure, that the person responsible for checking in the code would either fix it or that we would nuke the code from that repo or what, what, what recourse do you envision here? I don't know. I, I mean, those are, those are good questions. Like, I, I think what we'd have to do is, you know, there, there are going to be changes, for example, like if we change the, the filter API, um, you know, today what we do is we'll go through and we'll basically fix all the extensions. Of course, if we change the filter API and there's this giant sandbox repo, um, you know, it's like we probably have to go through and, and, and fix it. In, 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 to, to, to some extent, I think it's self-correcting in the sense that as Envoy becomes more popular and there's more extensions written, the bar to like change these APIs just gets higher, higher and higher. So, I, I, you know, I, I do feel like if people kind of change a core functionality that breaks a bunch of sandbox filters, they should probably go and actually fix them. Um, but this, but this all has to be codified. So that's why I think before we do open season, like in the, in the main repo, like there's already people that are emailing us off, off list to say, we'd like to do filters for X, Y, and Z. I'm just like, I'm really hesitant to start letting people commit filters until we really think this through. Yeah. Now, one other thing that I'm just again, thinking about scaling is, you know, if we only make it best effort CI on the extension repo, um, the sandbox repo, as we get more and more developers, more people breaking things, we'll get, you know, um, essentially hidden failures and things like that. And we will actually slow down the velocity there as, uh, yeah. unless we make it, you know, fully sort of pre-submit oriented CI approach. Yeah. yeah. Good point is there a huge difference between that and, and the proper repo itself. I mean, you, you're in block, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Which, yeah, which is why I, I was suggesting maybe there was there was some you know we can put in place some policy around hey if this remains broken um, through no fault of of our own as yes as right of course standard, yeah right right then yeah. we would nuke that code from yep. orbit uh, yep and I think I think that's totally reasonable um, but I do think that per per this discussion. I think there's going to be actually like a pretty large document that, that 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 comes out of this, like whether it be in GDoc or in Markdown. And I really feel that we have to like we have to nail this policy before we start. Otherwise, it'll be total chaos. So it's like my my current thinking is basically that for extensions today that are basically either written or kind of endorsed by core core maintainers, we just keep going with the with the status quo. So, so like, for example, I'm going to add a, a, a tap dump extension next, next quarter. Um, and it's like, you know, that's something that as a core maintainer, like I will own, like I will make sure that it, that it works properly. But I feel like for other organizations that aren't core maintainers that want to basically own extensions, like this is where we, we have to, we have to kind of get this policy down. Um, so what, what I can do here, um, since I, I, I don't foresee anyone else jumping at the bit to actually sign up for this is um, I can go through and just do like a like a straw proposal on on what this would look like but again I, I don't really have the answers here like I, I think this is going to take some some iteration um, so I would love to work with other people who are who are interested in this so if you're interested in this topic definitely reach out like I'm sure Josh would be um, so like I can definitely work with Josh on this but if there's other folks that are interested um, let's let let's chat. And I would actually suggest that we start like a small working group with like three people or something, and just like let's let's try to hammer out like this proposal, and then we can get it out for people to actually review. Yeah, I would also be interested in that. Yeah, I, I think a design, I think a, a Google Doc would be better than a, a GitHub issue because it allows to explore the multiple threads of conversation yep. that happen in parallel. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can you can assign that to me um, just just to kind of at least do like an initial straw proposal. But if there's but you know if if out there if you're interested in actually helping with the proposal, um, I, I like I I don't have the answers here. So I think this is going to be a collaborative process. One other question that I think is worth thinking about is what about the extensions that are currently in the main repo? Like, uh, do we 
status quo and just leave them there? Or yeah, just... right. So like, I think, I think extensions that are in the current repo, they're already blessed extensions. Okay. Like they're being used in production. Like we, we maintain them as core, core maintainers. And I, I mean, to be clear, like I, I see that those extensions growing, but I think the point is we have to keep the quality bar high. And more importantly, for extensions that none of the core maintainers run in production, it is critical that like there are like owners files in there and there are reviewers who can actually do do first line reviews basically yeah okay um on this topic real quick um something came up this morning in code review i just i just since people are here i wanted to discuss it really briefly so i've been moving the code over um into the extensions folder and there was a question as to whether we should move TCP proxy and the HTTP connection manager. Um, I, I had put some verbiage in the GitHub issue of why I actually moved them. Um, the TLDR there is that I, I moved them because they are loaded as extensions, e even though they might not be able to be compiled out. Um, so my preference was just for consistency to basically keep all of the extensions together. Um, the alternative is to keep them where they are, which I, I think is a little worse from a code discoverability standpoint. And then the option three that I threw out is actually make a, a new directory called something like core extensions. And those extensions would, would follow the same directory structure as extensions, but they would not be able to be compiled out. So those are, I think, our three options. So I, I, I wanted to throw that out there for discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, that, that comment on the, on the GitHub issue is largely just a, um, a, re a reflection of the, the to-dos you had in there to reduce dependency of things like WebSocket and TCP proxy. Do you think it will be possible in general to, dep to reduce dependency of all of Core Envoy on HTTP Connection Manager and TCP proxy? It would be possible if we made the admin handler optional. Now, given that I don't think that will ever happen, like, Probably not. So like given that the admin handler depends on the connection manager, like I, I, I don't see us ever actually being able to compile that out. Um, so, so, the, so the reason that I moved it was not so that it could be compiled out. It was just for consistency. Um, and I, I still see value in that, but I don't, I don't feel super strongly about it. So I, I guess my, my opinion would be either move it with the rest just for you know allowing people to learn from code and having all of the code extensions be together even if they're not optional um, or i would propose that we do this core extensions directory where it's very clear that everything in there is not optional like it's basically yeah it's basically compiled I, I think i think the existing structure is fine i think what it would be nice is um we just we make an, an exception to the rule which says you're allowed to, from core code, depend on TCP proxy or HTTP connection manager, just those two, or there's a third one, whatever. Yeah. And we actually put this into check format. We can easily just analyze the uh, build files and uh, verify. That's true. Yeah, that would, okay. Yeah, I, I, will, I will make a follow-up issue because as I'm doing this, there, there's a bunch of follow-ups that are becoming clear. So like, for example, in order to compile out Redis, you actually have to be able to have pluggable uh, help check, which is something that we probably want anyway. Um, so like there's a bunch of follow-up items here that will that will come out of this. So I'm going to do a tracking issue for basically follow-ups and I'll, I'll be liberal with my with my to do's. OK. Um, OK. I think we can skip this last item on the agenda. We can do we can address this next time around. Uh, it's not really pressing. Um, maybe just leave, leave time for any questions. Sure. Sounds great. If there's no questions, we, we could talk about that now uh, also. So in the two minutes that we have, uh, yeah, so what's come up recently is that Istio is considering moving to a model where they currently have a model similar to ours where their APIs are separated from the core. Very good reason for the separation. Um, 
You don't want to force dependency on all of Envoy just to consume its APIs. And logically, the APIs are a form of specification, the Envoy proxies and implementation. Um, th those are essentially the two uh, guiding reasons, at least for us, and I assume for HDO. It is a lot of overhead. I'm sure everyone's experienced the issues of having to check into docs in one repo, make a change here, check the, uh, you change the docs there, change the API in uh, the data plane and API repo, and then change the SHA back in the main repo and so on. There's, there's a lot of sort of uh, FUTs there, which could be avoided if we were all in a single single repo. Now, obviously then that has a disadvantage that if you just do that naively, you force a dependency on all of Envoy. The way this is solved, I believe, I think it was, came up in the context of Kubernetes and I think also Turbine Labs mentioned that they had done something similar, is you essentially just have a periodic bots, uh, jobs, a cron jobs essentially, which go and they can, they can be, you can call them bots if you want, which is to synchronize just the API subdirectory from your main repo into its own standalone repo, and then folks form their dependency there. Um, it seems like that would be uh, a lot lower overhead for developers. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty awesome to me. Um, I, I think if, if we can get the tooling, like we should, we should definitely do that. The other, uh, the other disadvantage I see to having the separate repos is uh, reading the history it would be really useful when you see a code commit to also see the docs in the same Agree. diff just so you can tell, hey, this is exactly what the behavior is. Agreed. Yeah, so I, I mean, that, that seems like a perfect compromise to me it is to basically move the API and the docs into the main repo and then do like a nightly sync out to the, out to the existing data plane API repo. So, I would suggest that we open a tracking GitHub issue for that, or maybe just link it to the to the bot issue. Um, but but this will be blocked on us having some type of bot cron system. Yeah, I'll take the action item there to open the tracking issue. Okay, I think we're getting unless, out of here. Unless you would like Harvey to every morning come in and do that sync. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.